Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I am going to be talking about the Crown XLS 2502. I'm laughing is because this is going to be a difficult video to make. Now before I made this video, I was chatting with Sean from Zero Fidelity. I was talking to my friend Mr. Kanta because he got a chance to take it home and uh, try it. I call him Mr. Kanta because he used to own a pair of Kanta. And I was saying, man, this video is going to be so hard to make. No matter how I do this, make this video, it's not going to validate everyone's point of view. And I'm going to piss somebody off in the process. You see, there's three groups of people watching this video. One, the one that loves Crown and is expecting me to give a brief review. Thomas, if you're actually, if you know what you're talking about, you will recognize that this amp is amazing for the money. Okay. Then you got a second group of people that I call them the anti-crown. And uh, they're expecting me to expose the truth about the crown amp as how much of a piece of crap it is. Crown and good stereo, you don't put them in the same sentence. You see you have that group of people. And if I say anything good about crown, unsubscribe. Thomas, you just lost your credibility. I thought that you, given the fact that you have experience of high end uh, audio, you will see the crown amp for what it is. So I got to deal with that group of people. Finally, you have the group who's about to buy this amp. Just want to hear my opinion on it. So three different group, three different expectations. How do you, how do you make a video without losing half your subscriber? Well, obviously that's a trick question. The answer is objectively and honestly. All right guys, so uh, let's tackle this today. All right guys, so a bit of good news and bad news before we start. So here's the bad news. Adorama has decided that going forward, they can sponsor me. And I say bad news because for some of you, it's like, oh no, Thomas just got bought off, unsubscribe. Now the good news is, they have opened up their store to me, so you can go to their website and choose what you want me to review. So after this video, go to the website, check them out. Now they've been selling audio for about five years now, five, six, I think. And um, for some of us, we think of them as the, the go-to place for camera gear, right? But no, they're, they're actually selling audio gear right now. And if enough of you choose, let's say, a certain product, Thomas, I'd like you to review the Yamaha or something, then uh, put it in the comment and I'm going to ask them to send it to me. Now, although I highly recommend you ask them to send me the, the most expensive full cow speaker on their website, but I'll leave it all to you. But of course, don't worry about uh, the integrity part because with me, it's very simple. If I like it, I'll review it. If I don't like it, I'll just send it back without making a review. So yeah that's just my rule all right so let's talk about areas of opportunity first so i can understand for some people why the crown does not work for them now my only issue is when people judge this amp based on their past experience with a different crown amp that i don't think is fair and because each product despite having that house sound each brand they each company produce sometimes good products and bad products. If you're going to criticize a product, at least make sure it's specific to that product. And I sincerely believe you cannot just listen to it in the store for three minutes and draw a conclusion. I think that's a bit too arrogant. You actually have to bring it home and try at your place to come up with a meaningful criticism because your criticism will affect other people's purchasing decision. So if you own it and you didn't like it, sure, please put it in the comment section and that will help other people make informed decisions as opposed to crown stocks because it's less than $10,000. Sorry, that, that, that's just not smart. So areas of opportunity. For me, there are three main ones. One is that the top end, there's a bit of glassiness, number one. Number two, there is a bit dry and I wish there was more body in the mid-range. So these are the three main ones. Now, having said that, I was talking to Mr. Kanta regarding this and he said, yeah, okay, so what's the big deal? I mean, we deal with class D amps all the time and you know how to solve it as much as I do. Now, for those of you who have not seen the video, me interviewing Itai from the company Heaven 11, please check it out because we discuss about class D having the third harmonic problem and how we have to solve it with introducing second harmonics into it. Check out that video and I'll link it somewhere here. So I understand for some people that glassiness is a deal breaker, okay? But having said that, one thing I noticed is that you can actually reduce it or eliminate it completely. 
how do we do it? Uh, number one, uh, we use tubes in our system. And number two, and I apologize for those of you who don't believe it, we deal with it with cables. So that's two things that we do. So for Mr. Cantor, you know, he has very high-end preamps, so it's easy for him to deal with. Um, he even used tone control because the glassiness has something to do with sharpness. There is a, a relationship there. So uh, with tone control, he say, uh, solves it completely 100%, no problem whatsoever. In my case, yeah, I have to work a bit harder than normal because I find that that glassiness is a bit more than what I'm used to with the other Class D amps I have. Uh, ultimately, my best combination was using the mu Musical Paradise tube DAC plus the Bimester preamp and then the crown. I will say this though, with the Sonata, I noticed there was still like, I would say 1% at the very top end. Now keep in mind that the Sonata is a very revealing speaker and the fact that I'm very sensitive to that and it's because I'm just listening for that specifically. So that's why I still hear that 1%. I would say most people would not even pick that up, okay? So let's keep that in perspective. With the LSIM and the Q3050i, the glassiness is gone. It's pretty much gone. You have a bit of dryness, but you know, that you solve with tubes, right? You, you keep trying different tube gears to, to deal with it. But overall, with the LSIM 707, I would say that it sounded very good. Everything that I bring home, including $5,000 power amp preamps, there's always some issue. And you just have to work it out and bring the very best out of it. All right, so let's talk about the strength of the crown. I remember I called Mr. Cantor one day and I told him, dude, I don't know what to say about this amp. And for him, it was like, what the hell? It's super easy, man. Great highs, great mids, great lows. What else do you want? I'm like, but it has this problem and that. And Mr. Cantor said, dude, man, 600 bucks. What, you want it to start making you coffee now? Come on, keep your expectations in check. So I'll say this. The crown top end is expressive. If you want detail, this is the speaker to get. In fact, when I move from the XPA2, the Emotiva, to this crown, wow, it's like this is a very lively amp. It, it's like injecting adrenaline to my speakers. And I remember uh, trying with the uh, Q Acoustic 3050i, the Polk Audio LSIM, you know, those are layback speakers, right? But with this crown, you can forget it being a layback speaker. It's almost like that. So in terms of uh, mids, well, okay, it's very clear. Fine, I just wish there was a bit more body. Well, whatever. And bass, though, oh, very good control. I have to say, what really took me by surprise is the amount of control even at low volume. Okay, so let me share with you a test track that I use. The first note when it hit, I remember the first time I listened to it was with the volume very low. Yet, with the LSIM 707, which is very difficult to control, at low volume, the first note was well defined and clear. And there was enough power in it, even at low volume. I was like, I don't even know if my reference amp can do that at that kind of volume. The amp is fast and it's dynamic. So, for those people who who's looking for an amp like that, oh yeah. So if you have a layback speaker and you want to you know to, to liven it up, uh, definitely this is an amp you should look at. For example, the Waftel D225. Yeah, this this amp will uh, will wake up your speakers. So for this reason, just this three strength alone is worth the 600 something. That's what Mr. Cantor feels like. So tell me one other amp that we try that can do all this for under 600 something, and that can also control very difficult to drive speakers. Good luck. All right, so let's move on and compare it to the XTZ Edge Power Amp that I recently reviewed because some of you were asking me about this. Now, I will say this, the XTZ is smoother overall. It's more refined, the top end, given the fact that it's slightly rolled off, feels more analog sounding. Uh, there's more layering in the soundstage, and I find it better looking. Now, on the other hand, the Crown, what it has is more expressive top end, sounds faster, better bass control, plays better at low volume, and there's no problem driving difficult speakers. And as well, it's very dynamic. So 
it depends on what you're looking for. There's no which one is better. It really comes down to a question of taste. Now, for myself, I personally prefer the XTZ Edge and simply because it's smoother overall. Now, Mr. Cantor, on the other hand, prefers the Crown Amp because he said he has no problem driving all kinds of speakers. But, you know, he, he did mention that, you know, at the end of the day, it's like choosing between the blonde and the brunette. You have these two really pretty girls. They both have fantastic personality. Which one are you going to choose? My point is that there's no, like, which one is better. All right, so I'm going to end the video at this point. I want people to think about the concept of value. Now, let's take a look at Mr. Cantor, for example. If you go to his home and you look at the system he has, you're going to see that he's playing with pretty good gear. Now, I'm showing you Mr. Cantor's system here, not to show off his system, but rather to make a point. And the point is that despite him playing with such high-end gear, well, quote-unquote, he still wants to buy the crown because he understands value. And that's the key word, value. He's buying it because he's building a second listening room. And in the second listening room, for him, it makes no sense to have another high-end system because today's budget system can do really well already. And for him to choose Crown as one of the candidates is because he recognized the value of it. Because we can A-B test them and we see its performance envelope. We know what its limit is, but because we look at the price too, we understand that it is good value. When Mr. Cantor asked me, can you find a power amp that's 600-ish that can do all this? We're not being like dumb here. Like if I say no, that means that this is the best power amp in the whole universe. No. When we say that, it's because we understand we're looking for very specific things. And in this case, I've already mentioned it. For him, what's important is the speed, the ability to drive very difficult speakers, and so forth. Let's say you bring the Vidor in, the shit Vidor. I'll tell you right away, when it comes to speed, it's not going to be as fast as this Crown. Sure, the shit Vidor will do many things better than this Crown, but what's important to Mr. Cantor is not what the shit Vidor can do, but what the Crown can do. If what I say in this video appeals to you, meaning the strength and price of opportunity does not matter to you, then you should absolutely consider taking a look at the crown. So with that said, before I let you go, make sure you go check out Adorama so that you can choose a product for me to review. And I just put it in the comment section. I hope I didn't lose too many subscribers today, but I really want to be frank about it. So, all right, see you next time. Like stars in the darkest night, crystallized fascinating. If you want.